Serious, surgeons of Reddit that do complex surgical procedures which take 8 plus hours. How do you deal with things like lunch, breaks, and restroom runs when doing a surgery? I'm a liver transplant surgeon. I do more living donor than deceased donor transplants. They take longer, typically 8 to 12 hours depending on the complexity. In most cases, there is a break at the point when the recipient liver is ready to come out but the donor liver is not. There is time for a coffee and a pee. Sometimes the donor team is faster and the recipient surgeon ends up operating continuously for up to 12 hours. The surgeon is in a state of constant stimulation from the surgical challenge of the procedure. It is probably one of the most difficult regularly performed operations, and lunch is not a factor. In fact, the combination of dehydration and higher levels of endogenous steroids ensures that restroom runs are not an issue either. It catches up at the end of the operation but I don't even feel tired until it's over. That being said, it is not that exciting for the assistant and when I was a fellow, I do recall falling asleep while assisting prolonged surgery, particularly in the low ebb hours of the night, 2am to 6am. But then we were all chronically sleep deprived when we were fellows anyway. Those are interesting spells of sleep. One goes directly into REM sleep and dreaming. Snapping back to wakefulness at a sharp word from the primary surgeon and performing adequately for a few minutes before going to sleep again. All this happens while standing up. Interestingly, although the instruments tend to stay where they were instead of following the surgeon's requirements. And that's why hospitals really shouldn't keep people in for such long shifts. Well, I had a 14 plus hour brain surgery a couple years ago. It was supposed to be less than 8. I was having an electronic pacemaker type of device installed in there to help control my epilepsy. My neurologist and neurosurgeon had spent more than a month planning exactly where each wire and screw was going to go. Just like plenty of other things in my life, things didn't go as planned. Once I was all opened up and after two of the three major parts of the procedure were done. Something in my head didn't look quite the way it did in my scan so they had to make some on the spot changes. By on the spot meant leaving the room for a couple hours to go and replay a few things and make some decisions about what would be the best way to make it work. When talking to the surgeon afterwards and asking lots of questions, he explained that I was actually hanging out in the table with part of the skull open for most of that time. He would have had plenty of time to go eat and take a nap while out of the room if he wanted to. Now, I thought that was pretty cool, but apparently my family didn't really think so. Dang that is a sick image to imagine of yourself lol. Level 1 Trauma IQ Nurse here. One of the longer surgeries for my unit was 23 hours on the table. I asked my cardiac surgeon how they are able to go for so long. He told me he started the emergent case when it arrived and at the 12 hour mark relief team was in place to come in and take over. He stayed in the or till the 16 hour mark napped 4 hours then came back in. As far as bathroom breaks when you have that much adrenaline pumping in you because the person on the table life is in the balance and you don't notice hunger or the need to use facilities. Only way I can explain is like putting your body in fight or flight mode. Also don't go off of anything on any TV show Grey's Anatomy is just a giant ball of falsehood no doc is wearing a diaper in the or. As many of you have said on previous posts down in the or there are multiple bathrooms for staff and surgeons completely cut off from the public. The or is its own world inside the hospital. Another thing I thought of there's always more than one surgeon in the room because if anything were to happen to the primary surgeon the secondary steps in. As someone who has worked in an or here's what happens. They break scrub if they really have to pee. In large cases there are usually multiple surgeons to include residents, fellows, med students and interns. As for eating, it's not that hard to not eat or drink for 8 hours. Are you going on a surgical rotation and are worried? I never drank coffee in the morning when I scrubbed because I knew my relief would be around 1pm. Also breaking scrub, as long as not first scrub of day or you didn't poo, takes like no longer than 8 minutes. It's not hard to get a bathroom break. Usually cases are 8 plus hours and everyone utilizes the facilities in between cases. Thanks for the info. Not a surgeon. I had just watched a YouTube video of that girl who had 8 plus hour brain surgery and thought of the question. It's not that hard to go that long without food or a break when you are that focused on something. That being said, most cases aren't that long and if they are. It's okay to break scrub to eat drink bathroom breastfeeding surgeon moms will go pump. 
may. I'm a hand surgeon. For longer procedures you typically try to take care of everything beforehand. Eat. Use the bathroom. Make sure everything is good to go. The anesthesiologist would be in charge if I left the room, though. Anesthetist. Australian equivalent of anesthesiologist. Here, we are in charge even when you're in the room, you just don't know it. Trained in pediatric CV surgery, men are long cases. The surgeons and ancillary staff would scrub out. The lead surgeon would usually only take one break during a long case. Usually multiple surgeons in the same case. You will never see the surgeon and the anesthesiologist taking a break at the same time though. There always has to be an MD do present in the OR. It's rarely a single surgeon. That's the simple answer. Especially in complex operations, there will always be a team of surgeons. Often, there will be a trainee, and they will switch in and out based on the phase of the surgery. Also it depends what kind of surgery. I witnessed a surgeon with a urethral catheter performing a 6 hour surgery once. Depending on the place, surgeon, and the type of operation, you will have different settings. I'm a medical student, but during my surgery rotation, I worked on the hepatobiliary transplant team which are notorious for long surgeries. There's often one attending physician, one three residents at different levels of training, and a medical student for these long surgeries. I was in a Whipple procedure, very, very long, and at hour 7, the chief resident dismissed me and another resident to go to lunch, and then we came back after eating and peeing. The attending would pop in and out between this surgery and another one he was overseeing. The chief resident didn't take a single break for the entire 10 hours. Surgeons are weird, and they never pee, and they live on uncrustable sandwiches and diet doctor. Pepper. In my experience, needing to blow your nose is a far bigger issue for everyone than hunger or needing to pee. Imagine spending 5 hours sniffing and feeling a drip on the end of your nose. I've been a surgical nurse for years and I've been in my fair share of 12 plus hour cases. Surgeries that are this complicated quite frequently involve more than one surgeon and their assistant, S, usually a PA or NP. A lot of the time they will tag each other in out. Some of the longest cases I circulated were cancer surgeries that involved immediate first phase reconstruction. So you potentially have a cancer doc and a plastics doc, sometimes a neurosurgeon, etc. Each surgeon gets their turn, so there's opportunities for breaks, and in some cases, they just do what they have to do. I've been in more than one case where a surgeon had to break scrub to go take care of some basic human needs. We keep on doing what we're doing and patiently await their return. Very few surgeries are so immensely critical from start to finish that a surgeon can't take a 2 minute pee break if desperate. And I've had to slip a juice box past a face mask, too. LOL. I'm a resident in a department for neurosurgery. Our surgeries can last very long. If you are the surgeon time will fly because you are focused and concentrated. If you are the assistant it is sometimes very hard to stay concentrated and awake. Most of the time we use the microscope during brain surgery. Standing for hours and looking in the microscope while trying to stay concentrated till the performing surgeon needs your assistance can be brutally hard. Sometimes you literally fall asleep standing upright. You can take a break if you have to. It's a complete different setting. As a performing surgeon I don't need a break during surgery. OP times between 6 and 8 hours are normal. The longest time without break was about 12 hours. I frequently do long operations for complex reconstructions and time sort of passes without knowing. I typically eat a big breakfast but limit liquids other than standard small coffee. If you have to use the restroom you just go and come back. The operation just stalls. In Asian countries it is not unusual for the surgeon to take a whole lunch break while the anesthesiologist stays w patient. Don't usually eat until after case done unless you stuff something down during bathroom trip. There was a hardcore vascular surgery fellow I knew who tried to impress the attending by wearing a catheter during the operation but he ended up getting ridiculed and made fun of more than just going to bathroom. 6-8 hours are longer cases but I wouldn't typically plan to take a break during that. Time does go very fast when you are doing the operating. On all days I routinely go most days without eating until I'm done with everything for the day and can sit down and enjoy it. I also don't go out for buffalo wings or Mexican the night before a long case. 
So I am making choices knowing I'll be scrubbed in all the next day. My aunt had a recurring brain tumor, skipping excessive detail. She was 22 years past her third brain surgery when it was discovered that it had returned. Her fourth brain surgery took 10 hours. I met the surgeon afterward. He looked like he had just run an Iron Man. I'm a veterinarian, and I do surgery a few times a month. I work with laboratory animals. For me the excitement and focus while doing surgery kind of shuts off everything else. I don't think I've ever needed to leave to pee. If someone has an issue, usually for us it is someone starts feeling woozy or gets overheated. They can sit down for a minute and take a break without breaking sterility if there's a stool in the oar. Longest single one I've done was 6 or 7 hours surgery time. But we sometimes have multiple surgeries in a day going assembly line style. And are assisting with anesthesia, recovery, and wrangling externs at the same time. So you can easily go 8 hours without much of a break. I tell the externs to bring a drink and a snack to have right outside the door. If you start feeling sick tell someone. And if you start passing out, try not to land on the patient. Medical student here, have been in 6 plus hour procedures before. It's dependent on the procedure, but in our case we hit a roadblock that required another surgeon to come and evaluate. We had two surgeons, so while waiting for the consult, one surgeon along with me and a resident were told to go take a quick break. They just covered the open area with sponges, they're more like towels but are called sponges, and we broke scrub to go out quick. When we got back, the other surgeon did the same. I'm a cardiac surgeon, routinely do operations in the 4-12 hour range. I trained as a resident for 10 years after medical school to even start to practice independently. When you are a resident fellow in a rigorous surgical field, you train your body to get used to those procedures and standing for that long. For the most part, I don't even think about going to the bathroom or eating during cases in the 6-8 hour range. In the rare times that I do break scrub and go to the bathroom or get a drink, I usually find a natural break in the procedure when it is safe. For my field, this is usually as I am rewarming the patient's body back to baseline or allowing the heart to reperfuse from the cardioplegic arrest. Surgical trainee here I've only scrubbed in 8 hour plus a couple times the most recent being last month. Simultaneous pancreas kidney transplant, where we started at 2pm and ended at 10.30pm. I'm pretty young, 26, so it's no big deal for me, but I do respect the fact that my bosses, 4060, managed to plow through too. Throughout medical school and training you just get used to it, no scratching itches, no toilet breaks, delayed meals. Personally I don't have lunch for physique reasons, intermittent fasting, and cannot eat for more than 30 plus hours and still function pretty well. This is not my medical opinion. But I think 3 meals a day is just a social construct. I don't think humans actually need to eat that regularly. I'm a perfusionist, which means I run the cardiopulmonary bypass machine during heart surgery. Oftentimes, nurses and physicians have people they can call to come relieve them for a moment while they relieve themselves. Surgeons and anesthesiologists have a lot of power clout in the operating room and can hold up the procedure for a bio break. But if a non-physician tried that it wouldn't go over well. I've had surgeons leave in the middle of a bypass run to go to the bathroom, they just cover the open chest and I just have to sit there on pump like and butthole for a bit. The nursing field is much larger, so relief is easier to get because they can just give each other breaks. The hospital I work at now is very small, which means I don't have anyone to call for relief most of the time. I haven't had to do this yet and I hope I never have to, but I had an instructor who had to get a nurse to get him a pee bottle so he could relieve himself in the operating room. He just had to put his back to the surgical field and be quiet about it. It is completely unsanitary and not what you would ever want to have to do. We can be fired or worse. The patient could die for leaving while on bypass. So timing your breaks and being aware of fluid intake before a procedure is important. Surgeon here. Two things can happen. One, I'm so focused on the procedure that I don't feel hungry until I am done. And if I don't take liquids during the surgery usually I don't feel like I need to pee. I'm talking about a 5 to 8 hour surgery. I try to go into long surgeries well fed. All this being said, I've had to run to the bathroom for emergencies or felt a little weak for lack of food. 
They can put a candy in your mouth or something easy to eat. Or you can just scrub out and then scrub in again. There are usually two to three surgeons scrubbed in, and not every part of the surgery is critical. So there are moments where you can leave and your team can carry on for the time you're out. My old roommate is a surgical tech. He has told me that some surgeons have catheterized for long surgeries. Don't know how common that is, but it happens. That makes sense. That way they can drink the water they need without worrying. Surgical subspeciality resident here. You get good at holding it and planning your hydration accordingly. I've gone 11-12 hours without pee drinking eating. Food tastes delicious afterwards. It usually takes two people just to do a dental filling. I assume that breaks for these types of surgeries might be taken when it's someone else's task to work on. Not that big a deal honestly. Over the years of training you just get used to it. Usually I use the bathroom before I start a case. Very rarely during an unusually long case I may need a break for water or a snack. A break can help with mental fatigue as well. Usually I can find a stable minutes to sneak out for 5 minutes if I need it. I'm never hungry while I operate but can be starving after I'm done. I assist in surgery. Honestly you forget about time. A 8 hour surgery might seem long when you think about it but in reality you don't notice time passing. You become aware of time when you get hungry but that will go away if you don't eat. You have to pee before going into surgery. You get dehydrated but unless the room is hot, it's not that bad. I have seen surgeons step out for a pee break but it's not a big deal. Anesthesiologists keep patient alive. Everyone else maintains sterile field. You can totally leave and grab a quick snack and pee. As an assistant there were times when I was bored to tears because I can't see what is going on. Those surgeries are the toughest, even if they last just 2 hours. Nurse here. I did a surgical rotation in nursing school. It's amazing how your body can somehow shut down things like the need to pee when you're in the middle of a 8 hour skin grafting surgery in a 90 degree operating room. Skin grafts require a warm or. I worked with a cardiothoracic surgeon who would scrub out to pee right before the patient goes on bypass. A needed break when the patient is stable is not impossible. This is academic medicine though so there are several other doctors in the room. I'm remembering that episode in Grey's Anatomy where they had some long surgery to do and wore adult diapers. Was I wrong to believe that that's what surgeons do in these cases? The comment below yours just debunked this one. I just stand there the whole time because I'm a resident. But seriously, you zone in so hard that you often forget that time is a thing. I get in a kind of trance fixation where the only thing I focus on is the flow of the procedure in front of me. If you have to pee really bad or are about to pass out, you can tap out for 5 or so while the anesthesiologist watches the patient. It's not uncommon to get through what seems like 5 minutes and you look up and 3 or 4 hours have passed by. Lysing adhesions on a tough reed laparotomy or dissecting out a big sarcoma from the retroperitoneum is almost zen like when you've been at it long enough. And you learn to survive on power bars between cases. When a hospital has a crap cafeteria out crappy fast food in house. It doesn't frick the families. It fricks the staff. Particular surgical staff. I've been curious about this for a little while. Daughter has HLHS. And has been through 4 open heart surgery. Her longest was 10.5 hours. I know that's not incredibly long. But you figure the surgeon is in there for probably 9 hours of that time. That's a long time not to pee. Her surgeon has done pediatric heart transplants as well. I can't imagine the time for something on that scale. What and time your intake. One of the surgeons always gets rid of his coffee before we go on pump for a heart bypass case. I usually get relief somewhere around 9am. I know I can't take a sip of water and poop within 10 minutes. I personally can and have stood at the field for 12 plus hours after that. My record is 20 hours. Crap really hit the fan that day, and my paycheck reflected that due to overtime combined with night and weekend shift premiums. You can go a long time without a bathroom break if nothing is being consumed. Sometimes we take sips of orange juice for blood sugar if things go beyond 12 plus hours. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
bye for now.